You can use SQLite to generate data for reports, in addition to using it as a database. So what is a report? It's simply a way to aggregate and summarize data. For example, suppose you had a store which sold products and you gathered data about each sale and each product sale every time you sold a product. You might want to report on these kinds of things. You might want to know how much you sold it of each product every day. You might want to know how much money you earned per sale with each sale comprising multiple products and quantities. You might want to know how much profit you earned per sale. You might want to know how many sales you had overall per week. The SQL language has powerful features to count, aggregate, and reduce data using the following uh, SQL language constructs. It uses aggregate functions such as count, sum, average. Uh, it has a group by clause which makes the aggregate results group by some other attribute. And it has a having clause to filter in or filter out aggregate results which meet some condition. I'm going to start with a simplified example. So let's fire up the old SQLite database. Um, I'll call it blog.db. Okay. Um, suppose you have a blog. You have a blog, it has many posts, and each post allows comments as well as upvoting of comments and upvoting of posts. In addition, suppose you have some magical system which counts the number of backlinks to your blog post, and you can track them. Your database then may look something like this. So I'll just do a create table. You have posts with an integer primary key. You have some pros. You have the number of trackbacks and you have upvotes. So let's create that table. And then you have a comments table, which uh, again, it's a ID. It's got some pros for the comment. It's got the number of upvotes and it's got a post ID, which points back to the posts table. I should create the table, I suppose. Um, and if you just do a dot schema, you'll see that the two tables are there. I'll leave out the foreign key constraints on the comments uh, post ID field because it's not needed for this tutorial. But if you were building this in real life, you would definitely uh, need it. So I'm going to insert some data into posts. And I'll go over the first entry. So it's insert into posts, pros, trackbacks, and upvotes. We don't have to do the ID key but it, because it's auto-incremented. And the comment just says text one, it's got zero trackbacks and one upvote. Okay, and if you do select star from posts, you'll see you have exactly what we put into it. What I'm going to do is add a pile more data. Boom. Okay, so I added a bunch of fields, um, a bunch of uh, items into the into the posts uh, table and you can pr if you're watching the video you can stop it to stare at the data to see what I did uh, this one particular post has a lot of um, a lot of uh, upvotes hang on yes so um, the next thing I'm going to do is select star from posts and that tells you what's in the post table okay just as Whatever data was put in, it's still there. Now I'm going to run the first query on saying how many counts, how many, how many posts do I have in the database? I'm using the aggregate count function. So I'm going to go select count star from posts. When you do count star, it'll just count rows in the posts table. And the number is eight, which makes sense because you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows in the table. Okay, but let's put, you'll notice though that the last row is really a, a null row, right? There's really nothing in there. I just, I, I, I put in a null for a reason. So let's suppose instead we did, instead of doing a count star, let's do a count pros. So how many actual comments, non-null comments did we get? And the answer here is seven. So we have seven non-null comments. Um, and, and it's key because whenever, what it does is when you go select count pros, it looks for the number of non-null comments. You can obviously put any field name in here to see you know, how many uh, non-null results you got. Um, another aggregate function is trackbacks. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to do select the sum of all the trackbacks in the posts table. And we have 15. Right, so how do we get 15? Uh, so here, trackbacks, we have 1 and 9, 10, and 5 is 15. And there's a pair of zeros as well, so we don't count them. And the null doesn't count. Oh, yeah, next field. So we have 15. We have 15 um, trackbacks. Um, and you can also count how many upvotes you have. 15. See, so now you can start getting aggregate aggregate data about your blog in some simple SQL statements. Obviously, if you combine this in some sort of a reporting application or use Crystal Reports, then you can get even you can make you know pretty looking reports from that. But the core is you need to understand how these aggregate functions and grouping works. All right, I'm going to go one more. Select average of upvotes. Okay, so it says the average upvote is four. Uh, makes sense, right? Um, the upvotes are here. Actually, let me just go select upvotes. Okay, so um, the average is four, which makes sense because you have eight posts and you have. Tw uh, 23, 27, 30, 32 upvotes divided by eight posts, and that gives you um, that gives you eight divided by four. Sorry, 32 divided by eight, which is four. Uh, that's the average number of upvotes per post. Now, you might want it to just to do with the posts that are not null. So this null is a bit of a dud result. So then what you would do is say select average upvotes from posts where prose is not null. So you have, whenever you're calculating any of this, you're going to have to check every row to make sure that the pro is not null to be included in this result. And now you get a number 4.57 blah blah blah. And that's actually the result of 32 divided by 7. Okay, so that's how you use the, the count, the sum, the average functions. Now, let's add some comments. Okay, so I'm going to insert an entity into the comment table. Insert into comments, see pros, upvotes, and post ID. So the, the comment is duh. Um, it has one upvote, and it's for the first post. All right, and if you do select star from comments, you get that same result. Now I'm going to just throw in a whack of data. Hold on a second. And boom. Okay. Now at this point you can just stop the video and, and look what I put in as data. Um, the key point thing to remember is I attach these comments to this, these two are post three, these three are to post, these four are post five, actually six, <laughs> seven. Um, post 7 has some, and uh, the supercalifragilistic has, well, that's post 7 as well. So those are all the comments that made it in. So if I go select star from comments, then we have all our comments. Now, let's suppose I want to sort of, you know, I want to see how many counts did I, how many comments did I get from post ID. So what I'll do is I'll say select the post ID and the count of the rows from comments and group by post ID. So what it'll do is it'll do the counts per post ID. So post number one had one comment, post number three had two comments, post number five had seven comments, and post number seven had four comments. And that's how this works. And if you check your, your data from the select, you'll see that that's what it comes out to. Now it gives a list of counts, but only for comments which had counts. If you want to also tally up and report on posts that had no comments, then it's a little trickier because you have to use a left outer join um, between the posts table and the comments table to, to get the results. So now we have a result for post 2. There were no comments added, so the answer is 0 right because I did a count and and so on okay so the key to this is the left outer join that captures all your 
all your rows that have no comments. Now this isn't a tutorial on left outer joins, but you kind of need them so that you can get your counts. Um, let's try another one. Um, is, hang on, let's do this query. Right there. Now, this is a little bit more complicated. I'm going select the ID, the pros, and the and the post upvotes. Okay. Um, and I want the sum of the comment upvotes as total comment upvotes from I'm doing a sub select. So I'm selecting the post ID, the post pros, the post upvotes as pup votes, and I call it that because I'm using it here. Uh, the trackbacks, the comment pros, the comment upvotes from posts, and then I'm left out or joining it to the comments table so I can find the non the the, the non null comments, and then I'm saying group it by this join table ID. So I get um, <clears throat> you get a post ID, you get the text, and then you have um, the number of post upvotes, the number of trackbacks and the sum of the comment upvotes, right? So this is all looking good. You're getting all the reports, but you'll notice that post 1 and post 4 and post 6, they had some nulls because there were no uh, comments and therefore no comment upvotes, right? And that's not really good. So what you need to do is... Um, use a coalesce function with the um, upvotes. So here I, use, I do select c.upvotes. Where is it again? Yeah, right here, c.upvotes. And we can't have that because it'll select, it'll do a null if, um, if the null is there and we don't want the null. So what we do, that, that cupvotes field becomes null as you see in result four and six. So we have to do a coalesce. So now instead of cup votes, we'll say coalesce cup votes or zero. So if there's a null here, it'll return a zero. And now we have, you know, we have zero comment up votes for all the comments, all the posts that had zero comments. Okay. Um, so what this does, I mean, in essence, what you're doing is you're building a big data set uh, using uh, inner joins or outer joins and then doing a, an aggregate function like a count or an average or sum or whatever, and then doing group by. Now you may want to filter out results um, from your posts, but you can't use the where clause because the where clause is intended for doing row by row. That's why in that previous query we had up here somewhere, I said where where pros is not null. That's because we're calculating the aggregate on each on, on rows that had a non-null pros, but we now want to have the result uh, filtered, so we don't use a where clause. Um, did I get the right query? Ah, uh, yes. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. Um, so instead of the where clause, we have a having clause. So it's that same query up here, group by JT dot ID, group by JT ID. ID, except now you say having total comment upvotes is greater than five. So only comments five and seven had uh, upvotes, you see 30 and 18, and 30 and 18. The rest of them had upvotes perhaps, but less than five, so they were filtered out. So overall, using aggregate functions such as count, sum, and average, as well using the group by clause and the having clause, lets you take, say, take a large data set and then reduce it to a, a useful uh, report, which you can then present in a, in a pretty program like uh, Microsoft Access or Crystal Reports or whatever. SQL a very cheap way to do this. So, uh, uh, you know, that's another way you can use the database and get some great use out of it. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, please feel free to comment. Thank you.